What's going on, everyone? Welcome to episode six of Just the Tip Tuesday. Today's episode is brought to you by CK Worldwide, the standard in TIG welding. Right now, CK is running an awesome deal on their MT200 ACDC TIG welder now through the end of March. The MT200 comes with everything you need right out of the box to start TIG welding, except the consumables and gas. The MT200 is a complete TIG welding system capable of 5 amp arc starts and has a compact portable design, weighing in at just 32 pounds. And it's dual voltage, so you can run it off 115 or 220 volt outlets, and it boasts an easy to use interface to get you set up to weld in a flash. The MT200 ACDC is the answer to both creativity and production driven TIG welding. This innovative TIG machine provides the ability to quickly and efficiently adapt to dynamic welding situations while maintaining the quality of experience you've come to love and expect from CK Worldwide. Get your MT200 today for just $19.95, along with other genuine CK Worldwide parts and accessories through your local authorized CK distributor. Not sure where your closest distributor is? No problem. Head on over to ckworldwide.com and click on the Find a Dealer tab. It's that easy. CK Worldwide, the standard in TIG welding. And now, let's get into the episode. Welcome to this week's episode of Just the Tip Tuesday. Today, I want to talk about some useful resources for welders, welding supervisors, inspectors, and educators. If you're passionate about welding and you want to take the next step in your career, you need to crack the books. And I know that's not something you want to hear, and most of us do not like to read. And I know this because I've been in the welding industry for a little over about, I'd say about 24 years. And I've taught welding for the past seven years, and most of my colleagues when I was out in the field and the majority of my students don't like reading, myself included. Um, Welders, like most other skilled trades people, we're hands-on learners, and we need to put our hands on something to fully grasp it and fully understand it. And like I said, I am myself, I don't like to read. I'm dyslexic, I have ADD, and reading is super difficult for me sometimes. I have to read the same thing three, four, five, sometimes six times just to grasp the concept. I typically prefer videos and audiobooks over physical books because I learn better visually and audibly. And I know that about myself. I just, I don't like to read, but you know, I have to do a lot of reading because of my job and because of, you know, the career path that I've chosen and the the type of work that I'm doing now. So that being said, there's so much information about the technical aspects of welding that just, you're not gonna be able to find it in a video. You can't find it in an audio book or, you know, you can't do it in a hands-on training seminar. Les Brown is one of my favorite motivational speakers. You got to check him out. And he said at one point, if you read one book a month in a given area, in five years, you'll be at the top 5% of experts in the world. Think about that. One book a month for five years. That's pretty damn impressive if, if you're able to do that. And that's why I've decided to stop procrastinating and start reading some more. I just need to cut the time out of my schedule and do it a little bit more often. And like I said, with my schedule, it's, it's pretty hectic and I probably won't be able to read a full book a month, but I could damn sure give it a try. Right. And you can too. So over the past couple of years, I've started a collection of various codes, standards, manuals, and best practices in our industry. And the only way to find out what's in them is to open the book and put my eyes to the paper. And sometimes, like I said, I have to review them several times for the information to sink in. And honestly, the information in these books have made me a better welder. And as many of you can probably understand and agree, once I understand the why of something, it reinforces the how of it. So I just wanted to share a list of great resources that I think people who weld for a profession should either own or have access to. And many of them are free to download, so you don't have to run out and purchase them. Uh, Some of them you will. And, you know, I recommend going through Amazon and eBay and getting older copies. And I'll kind of break that down as we go through. Um, So the first first book or standard that I would like to talk about is, this is something everybody should be familiar with, is the ANSI 
Z49.1 Safety and Welding Cutting and Allied Processes. This manual is available for free on the AWS website. Uh, it is a, uh, This is a great manual because one thing I've noticed in our industry is a great misunderstanding of safety. Whether it's welding instructors not teaching it at school, ignorance of the employers, or just an overall lack of care when it comes to the welders. The Z49.1 manual covers everything from hazards of welding fumes and how to mitigate them to wearing safety glasses, which, I mean, that should be common sense to anybody in the skilled trades. But it also covers what shade of lens you should be viewing the welding arc through based off of the welding process and the ampers that you're using. This covers everything you as a welder should be taking into consideration to protect yourself when welding. It's a great resource. It's free, like I said, and it's only about 69 pages. So read a couple pages a day and learn how to protect yourself. I mean, why not? I mean, it just makes sense. If you're going to be in this trade, you need to protect yourself. You're the first line of defense in your own safety, and most likely you're the last person that's going to hurt yourself. Nine times out of 10, somebody else is going to do it for you, but at least you'll be able to understand and identify potential risks and hazards in your industry. The next book is the AWS A3.0 Standard Terms and Definitions. Now, this isn't something you need to read like a book, but you should be familiar with the standard terms in welding. As welders, we tend to use a lot of slang words like suck back, stick welding, MIG welding, etc. And that's fine when we're talking to other welders, but when we have to speak to engineers and inspectors, we want to switch up our vocabulary a little bit. I actually had a great conversation with my buddy Pedrag Bean the other day, and we were talking about the value of a company having someone in the shop that can essentially translate what the welders are saying to the engineers and vice versa. Having a good understanding of these standard terms and definitions will help you immensely. Now, this is a manual that you can download older versions of the book on Google just by typing in uh, AWS A3.0 standard terms and definitions dot PDF. Or if you want a physical copy, um, you can also you can purchase this through the AWS by going to their bookstore at AWS.org. The next book is the AWS A2.4 Standard Symbols for Welding, Brazing, and Non-Destructive Testing. And as welders, we should be able to read welding symbols. And I really like welding symbols because they're pictures. And as I said earlier, I don't like reading, so I, I definitely like pictures. These pictures are going to tell us a lot of great information to include base metal preparation, joint prep, groove size, bevel angles, weld size, weld contour, etc., Having a good understanding of welding symbols and how to read them will make you a much better welder and more valuable to your company. And there's also a great reference guide available on Amazon. It's like nine bucks and it covers pretty much everything you need to know for 90% of the welding symbols that you're going to be working with. And if you plan on taking the CWI or the CWE exam, you're going to want to get the full manual. Again, you can download this version or you can download older versions in a PDF form on Google for free, or you can purchase the newest one on the AWS website. All right, moving right along. One thing I wish I knew when I was a young welder was the applicable code to the type of work that I was actually doing. I did a lot of structural welding along my welding journey and relied heavily on what I was taught by from the older seasoned welders that had been doing this type of work for 20 years. And guess what? A lot of what I was taught was wrong. So I had to unlearn a lot of bad habits and bad practices once I got into a place where we had to be code compliant. Now, most of the prints I worked off of had a section in the notes that basically said something along the lines of all welds shall conform to AWS D11 or AWS D12 or D13 and so on and so forth. But as a welder, I had no idea what the hell they actually meant. It wasn't until probably my second or third year into ironwork that I actually got to see a D11 code book in person. Crazy, I know. So one thing I highly recommend is picking up a code book for the type of work that you're currently working on. Yes, these code books are very expensive. However, having access to this information that's in these books is invaluable. Once again, you can get free copies of previously published code books by doing a quick Google search. Just be careful because most of the ones that are asking for your email address or a subscription are, they're probably just a scam. And obviously you can buy a copy of the code book on the AWS website as well if you have that kind of money. Um, if you're planning on becoming a CWI anytime soon, I recommend just biting the bullet and buying the book because you're going to need a physical copy anyway to navigate through during test day. And make sure you're getting the code for the type of work that you're doing. So 
If you're working on a pipeline, you know, you're going to want a copy of the API 1104. If you're doing, you know, pressure vessels, get a copy of ASME for the appropriate section of the work that you're doing. ASME codebook is something that I'm not too familiar with because it's right now it's outside of my wheelhouse, but it's definitely on my radar to review that manual eventually. It's uh, I kind of got that on my wish list. Uh, yeah, I guess you could say I, I definitely want to crack into that code book because I heard it's it's pretty damn in depth and it's definitely something that's intriguing me. Uh, a couple of other books that I would recommend that you can probably get the cheapest either I'd say either on eBay or Amazon or the Procedure Handbook of Welding by the James F. Lincoln Foundation and the Jefferson's Welding Encyclopedia by the AWS. These are fantastic books, chock full of great information on the various processes and procedures. Another great book I want to tell you about for those, you know, especially those that are trying to get into welding supervision, or if you want to become a certified welding supervisor, is the Certified Welding Supervisor Manual for Quality and Productivity Improvement by Jack Barkov, Kenneth Kerluk, and Don Lynn. And you can pick these books up on Amazon as well. You can probably find an older copy on eBay. I don't think they've made any updates to this publication in, in quite a while. So, you know, whatever, whatever copy you get, you're probably going to be right where you need to be. Now, obviously, you don't have to run out and buy all these books at once. I recommend starting off with the ones you can download for free. Like I said, definitely the, the Z49.1, the A2.4, the A3.0. You can get downloads of these, and you're not missing much between now and, you know, whatever book you can get your hand on in the current edition. I know they just updated the uh, AWS A3.0 standard terms and definitions for 2020 edition. I have not yet got my hands on that, but uh, that one's on my radar as well. So, you know, just get what you can now. Uh, get what you can afford. You know, download this stuff. Maybe you've got an interest in it. Maybe you don't. But at the end of the day, it's going to make you a much more well-rounded individual. It's going to make you more intelligent. You're going to understand how things work, why they work, you know, at a deeper fundamental level. And that's really what you want to what you want to aim for. I mean, if welding is going to be your career for the next 20 or, you know, better years, learn this information, study this information, talk to your your friends and coworkers about this type of stuff. Talk to some of the people on Instagram about this type of stuff. I get, uh, you know, I, I like to hang out with other people that are really interested in this stuff and nerd out and learn more information about what they're doing. It's just really cool to, you know, learn this type of information. There's so much more to welding than, than meets the eye. You know, just, I, I always tell people that, you know, there's more to welding than what's under the hood. And another great book is uh, Metals and How to Weld Them. This is a funny story. I've been trying to read this book for about five years. Um, and it, it, it's, I would put it on the, uh, the equivalent of NyQuil because it's, it's very dry. It's very technical. Not a whole lot of storytelling in this book. A lot of charts and figures. But the, the amount of information in there I know is going to make me a better welder. I'm going to understand metallurgy at a deeper understanding. And at the end of the day, you know, that's what it's all about is becoming the best version of myself, becoming the best welder that I can be. And the only way I'm going to be able to get this information is to crack open a book and read it and kind of push myself past, you know, a disability. And I, I think that's, you know, it's a, it's a good goal. It's a good effort to, to try and, you know, attend to. So, you know, I just wanted to recommend, uh, you know, this is some of the stuff that I'm currently trying to get through. Some of the stuff I'm trying to read. Uh, code books are a little bit different. You know, you don't want to read those front to back, um, you know, just because they bounce back and forth. So, that's not something you can just read cover to cover. And depending on which code book you get, I mean, they're, they get pretty in depth and we're talking, some of them are six, 700 pages or better, but you know, start off with the free stuff. Once you, you know, get to the point where you've got that thirst, you've got that hunger to, you know, go out for more knowledge, then I would recommend going out and purchasing one of the other books that you're interested in. And like I said, these are just a few that I recommend to get started with. Uh, you know, it's going to help you out on the next step of your journey. Obviously, any book you can pick up on the subject would be great to have. These are just some of, you know, the best that I've come across so far. And since I'm planning on going for my CWS at some point in the near future, that's kind of like my next goal is to become a certified welding supervisor because I find the information in that book very fascinating, talking about weld sizes, weld depositions, increasing productivity. It's, it's something that I just, I don't know, I kind of nerd out on. I think it's really cool. So that's the book that I'm going to be digging into next is the Certified Welding Supervisor Manual. You know, I hope you guys find this episode informational. I know it's, it's rather short, but I figured I'd put it out there. A lot of people ask me questions. 
on, you know, what books they can use to, you know, get it, get a deeper understanding into welding or what resources. I mean, you can pretty much find anything you want on YouTube. And I mean, there's some stuff on audible, you know, I like doing audible a lot, but you know, the information that you're going to want for welding, you're, you're going to have to crack a book as much as I hate to say it. So just wanted to put those resources out for everybody. I'm still in the process of collecting my, my welding library of, you know, different books, codes and standards and stuff. There's just so much information out there. But that's one of the things I'm going to try and do is sit down and read more, even if it's like, you know, five to 10 pages a day, you know, that's five to 10 pages more a day than, than, uh, you know, most people are reading on the subject. And, you know, if I want to become better in this area, better in this field, become a better resource, I need to get this information and I've got a thirst and a hunger for it. So, you know, go ahead and pick them up if you want. Uh, like I said, a lot of them are free to download. You can pick up PDF manuals, download it right to your computer and just kind of read it at your leisure. So, Uh, I want to thank you all for joining me this week for another episode of Just the Tip Tuesday. Hope you all enjoyed the episode and found some value in the content. If you have any good recommendations of books that you think I should read, you know, go ahead and drop them in my DMs. Uh, If you have any questions on any of the books that I have, uh, you know, reach out to me. And I've got a pretty extensive library that I've been collecting for a while. Uh, One thing I do want to mention is, like I said, a lot of these code books and standards and stuff, they're expensive, right? I get that. I know that. I've, I've paid for them. Um, One thing you can actually do is if you have an AWS section in your area that's relatively active, every section is supposed to have an AWS library and AWS will send them different codes and standards once a year. Usually it's like four or five books. Um, You can pop into your local AWS library and sit down and, and read those books. Some of them may have an option to where you can check them out or borrow them, but I know most of them you can't typically leave the facility or the office where those books are held. So reach out to your local AWS section. You know, if you want to cruise through the the D11 code book or, you know, standard terms and definitions, or, you know, check out the the welding symbols book, you know, pop in and and see if they have that available. And if you can sit down and read it. Appreciate you guys listening. Uh, Make sure to tune in every Monday for regular scheduled episodes of the Arc Junkies podcast. Remember every Tuesday, I got new episodes of just the tip coming out for you. In the first Wednesday of every month, I have Weld Wednesdays with AWS. Uh, Again, if you guys have any questions or stuff you want brought up or discussed on Just the Tip Tuesday, go ahead and shoot me an email, show at arcjunkies.com. You can also drop me a DM in the uh, the Instagram, and that is Podcast on Instagram. Hope you all have a great and safe week. And until next time, make every weld better than your last.